Hello everyone, welcome to the second set of videos uh, for this week uh, where, where we will be continuing in on chapter six um, talking about electrons. And today we want to actually start to talk about electron configurations. So uh, we know that the electrons are on the outside of a nucleus, uh, <clears throat> sorry, the outside of the atom around the nucleus, and they're not random. So last time we talked about the idea that there were these quantum states, particular orbitals that the electrons needed to uh, always be assigned to. And so an electron configuration for an atom describes the particular distribution of electrons in an atom. What orbitals are those electrons in? Where are they? You know, and then we know those orbitals have shapes and we can figure out all sorts of information as to where the electrons are, what they're distributed, uh, where they're distributed around the nucleus, how big they are, all that sort of stuff. And there's a couple different rules that we have um, that let us assign or figure out where electrons are gonna go. Um, we have Pauli exclusion principle, Aufbau principle, and Hund's rule. So we're gonna work our way through all of these through the course of all these videos um, to kind of figure out or, or understand more about where electrons are in an atom and how they're distributed. So the first one we wanna talk about is the Pauli exclusion principle. We actually touched on this um, in the last set of videos um, and the Pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons in an atom can have the same four quantum numbers. Um, so you have four quantum numbers, N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. Um, there are possible unique values for each of those or relationships between those that we talked about. And so if you have a set of four of those and they have particular unique values, you have fully defined a given electron. So let's take a look at what the implication of this is. So let's look at say electrons A, B, and C. Um, and so we could give them all quantum number N equals three. Um, that would mean that all of those electrons are in the same shell, uh, that's fine. Um, we can even then give them a uh, the L. Uh, we can say then that L equals one for all of these electrons. That would mean all of these electrons are in the same subshell. Okay, so we can have three electrons in the same shell, in the same subshell. Um, what about the same orbital, right? That would be specified by the M sub L quantum number. If that value is zero, that would specify which orbital they're in. Okay, but if we then look at the fourth quantum number, M sub S, we know we can have plus one half, we can have minus one half, and that's it. Um, there are only two values of M sub S. So if you can only have in one orbital, two total electrons, Nor, or no orbital can have more than two electrons. So the important principle or the important impact of the Pauli exclusion principle is that each orbital holds up to two electrons. You can't have more than that. You can have less than that. An orbital can only have one, but you can't have more than two electrons in an orbital. And so we've looked at kind of some of the effects of this last time. We know that in an S-type subshell, there would be one total orbital and two total electrons. Uh, in a P-type orbital, there are three total orbitals and a total then possibility of six electrons. D-type orbitals have uh, subshells, so I have five orbitals, 10 total possible electrons. F uh, gives you seven orbitals and 14 electrons. Um, and that's gonna continue on. Um, and it's again, it's only based on the type of subshell. So if it's SPDF, it doesn't matter what the number in front of there is. So 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S all have exactly one orbital in them and the total uh, max occupancy of two electrons. So um, that gives us our rules for how many kind of electrons we can put into orbitals. So then the question is, how are the electrons gonna fill those particular orbitals or occupy certain orbitals? And it's gonna be based around the energy of those orbitals. Okay, so we have um, our orbital energy. We talked a little bit last time about the idea that orbital energies um, are dependent on just the first two quantum numbers, N and L. So in a given subshell, all of the orbitals have the same energy. And the energy ordering um, is that generally shells, we order by shell, and within a shell, we order by the L quantum number. So S is less than P is less than D is less than F. So we kind of have one, two, three, but then there's a spread around those. And that leads to kind of some interleaving here where we can see that 3D has a higher energy than 4S, even though 4S is in a higher shell, um, it is a lower energy because the S's are more stable, uh, that shape is more stable than D's. Um, this pattern continues, 4D is a higher energy than 5S. Um, overall, this leads to an ordering of all the different subshells based on energy. Um, so this ordering here is just something you can be given. It just keeps going. You do not need to or want to memorize this. Um, you should always use 
this as a guide. Um, you should always have, if you're ever working through electron configuration problems, we can always use this out, this ordering here um, to let us uh, kind of follow through what the subshells are and what their ordering is. So when we're going through um, a set uh, or all of our different kind of subshells that we have, electrons are going to occupy the lowest energy subshells before they go into high energy subshells. Makes sense, right? Electrons are gonna take whatever the lowest energy, whatever's the easiest way to arrange. And so they're gonna go into those lowest energy subshells um, and you won't put, uh, electrons won't go into higher energy subshells until uh, the lowest energy is full, right? So you basically put all the electrons, fill a subshell, then electrons start to go up into higher energy shells. Um, so with the, that is the Aufbau principle, the idea of building up. And with that, we can start to come up with what electron configurations actually are. So the main, elect, there's a couple different ways to describe electron configuration, but we're gonna start with standard notation. And so in standard notation, electron configurations, you just write out uh, each occupied subshell um, in order of increasing energy with the number of electrons in that subshell given as a subscript. Uh, so for example, I have nitrogen right here. Um, and so I can see it's written 1s, then there's a 2, 2s, another 2, a 2p, 3. So how we would interpret that is that in the 1s subshell, there are two electrons. In the 2s subshell, there are two electrons. So again, that exponent that we have up here is telling you how many electrons are in that subshell. Um, so we always write that up, uh, even if it's full or anything like that. And then there's three electrons in the 2p subshell. So we can look, this is the total description of all of the electrons in nitrogen. You will note there is nothing written for higher. There are higher energy possible subshells, right? We know after 2p, uh, we'd get 3s, but here we don't care about that um, because there's nothing in there, right? We do not write 3s to the zero or anything like that. We just don't write anything there. Um, and there, that is understood that there's no electrons in those shells. So with that, with the now with our notation known, we wanna be able to work through uh, figuring out what the electron configurations are for a given atom. So we'll start with hydrogen. And so we know that hydrogen has one electron. And so we want to think about, well, we're always, if we want to put that electron somewhere, we always want to ask the question, well, what's the lowest energy uh, subshell that we have available? And whenever we're starting to go, and so we have nothing filled, so we're always going to start, and 1s is going to be the lowest energy. So we know we're going to put the electrons in the 1s. We want to think about how many can we hold? because it's S type, that can hold two. Okay, well, hydrogen only has one, one is less than two, so it becomes one S one. Okay, that superscript one, that exponent, just means you only have one electron, it just slots right in there. So then if we take a look at helium, we can uh, go through the process, same thing, elect helium has a total of two electrons, and we then ask the question of, well, where, what's the lowest energy subshell that we put those in? And the answer is again, 1s. And the 1s, because it is S-type, it can hold two electrons. So helium has two total, both can go in 1s, but now it's 1s2, where that exponent two is denoting the fact that there are two electrons in that uh, 1s subshell for helium. Okay, So we can keep going up, get to something like say lithium. Uh, we're now atomic number three. So we have three electrons in a lithium atom. We can ask the question, what's the lowest energy subshell? That answer is still going to be 1s. And so what that means is that lithium has a total of three electrons. It's going to put electrons into the 1s. Because it's S-type, that can hold a total of two electrons. Lithium has more than that. It has three. But the 1s2 gets filled, right? So you put two electrons in there. And then the question becomes, well, what's the next highest energy subshell? And then that becomes 2s. Um, you have filled up the 1s subshell. It can only hold a total of two, and lithium has three electrons. Um, so you get that out right there. Uh, you fill that up, and then you have to put one more into that 2s subshell. Um, we can go along to boron. This is now five total electrons. And we can see that when we start, we're going to answer these first questions of the lowest energy subshell is still 1s. And so that's gonna get filled up because boron has five and a 1s can only hold two. Um, so then it's, you're gonna go to the next and the next lowest energy is still 2s. 
And so that can hold two more. So you put those get filled up and then you get the one that's left over. So then you need to go to the next highest energy, which is two P. So we can see this idea of Aufbau principle literally means building up. And so what goes on is that these, you know, you always answer, ask those questions. What's the lowest energy? And you always get the same answer. So it just keeps going up and up and up of filling those in. Neon, uh, we can see be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. This is 10 total electrons. And so we fill in the 1s, we fill in the 2s, then we fill in the 2p, we get a full six in there. Um, but most importantly, neon as having 10 electrons, we can see that this part, the part, the subshells that were full are exactly the same. Um, so silicon, if we continue in there, we can see that you know this is now a total of 14. Um, and in this case, the 10 of neon show up as the 10 right there. And then we just keep going up. Those first 10, you have to answer those questions in the exact same way. So it's just building up what the electron configuration looks like. We're gonna look at some more examples of writing standard notation electron configuration. Uh, I have beryllium, oxygen, sulfur, and chromium. Uh, and so these are four that I wanna be able to write electron configurations for. Um, and so if I take a look at those, I know the first question I always wanna ask is how many total electrons do I have? How many electrons am I trying to assign? Because I need to know how many I'm putting if I wanna figure out where they're gonna go uh, or how many go in. Uh, and then I just fill up the orbitals starting from the lowest energy. And I determine what that energy ordering is based off that Aufbau ordering. We don't need to memorize those subshells. We just fill up those subshells starting from the lowest energy. Uh, and each orbital is capped at two electrons. So we know then it, in an S subshell, because there's one orbital, one times two, two total electrons. Uh, in a P type subshell, one, three orbitals, two electrons per gets me six. In a D type subshell, uh, two electrons per orbital, five orbitals gets me 10. Uh, so. If I want to take a look, then uh, beryllium has four total electrons. And if I look at my Aufbau ordering, uh, so I always want to get that Aufbau ordering and figure it out, I can see that the lowest is the 1s. Okay, I have four total electrons for it to put in beryllium. 1s can only hold two, so two electrons go in there. And so then I have four minus two, right? There was four electrons that I started with two have been assigned into the 1s2 so i have two more electrons so i go to that next highest energy and that's going to be the 2s so i'm going to put my next two electrons into that 2s orbital uh to a subshell and that 2s subshell can hold two total electrons so now i can see i have the two and the two those add together to give me four so my four electrons of beryllium give me a 1s2 2s2 configuration. Uh, oxygen is eight total electrons. I know I want to ask these questions of, you know, what's the lowest energy? And I know for beryllium, I already answered for the first four, it was 1s2, 2s2. So I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to get 1s2 for the lowest energy, and then it's going to be 2s2. We can see that in beryllium, those first four electrons filled the subshells. And so the first four electrons of oxygen go into the exact same subshells because we're as asking the exact same questions. We get the same answers. But now my two and two does not equal eight. So I have some more electrons that I need to assign. And that's where I go to the next highest energy, which is going to be 2p. So I have eight total electrons for oxygen. Four have already been assigned. Um, that means I need to do four more. 2p, because it is a p-type, can hold six total. Four is less than six, so 2p4. Um, again, I can see that I have two, two, four. If I add all those up, two plus two plus four, that is eight total electrons for the entire oxygen atom. Uh, if we take a look at sulfur, that is 16 electrons. Um, we can follow the same ask, you know, what's the lowest energy? We know where does that go? We're gonna get 1s2. Um, then we know we're gonna fill 2s2 because if eight electrons filled up all those orbitals, 16 electrons is definitely gonna fill those subshells. 
And now we get to a slightly different point than where the O was, right? O couldn't fill 2P. Um, that still is going to be the next lowest energy for the sulfur atom. But now if I have 2, 2 assigned out of 16, I have 12 electrons left to assign. 2P can only hold 6, so it'll take all of those. We're going to fill up the 2P at a full 6 electrons. So that's going to get filled up. Um, we want to ask, we still have more electrons. The next lowest energy is going to be 3S. Uh, 226, that's 10 total electrons. So 16 minus 10 is 6. We got 6 more electrons. This 3S can only hold 2. So we'll go ahead and put all of them in there. And again, that comes from the fact that it's S type. So 3S2, uh, we still have four more electrons to assign. The next highest energy is 3P. Um, 3P, because it is a P type, can hold six. Four is less than six. So we'll go ahead and put all four inside that 3P. So we can see with sulfur, there's more electrons in there. So it gets to be a bit longer. Chromium, our final example here, is 24 total electrons. And we're going to start 1S is going to be 2. 2s2, we can see anything that was full in sulfur um, is still full here in chromium. 2s6 and 3s2. These subshells were completely full, and as a result, they show up in chromium. Chromium has more electrons, so the same shells that were subshells that were filled in the S area sulfur have to be full in chromium in this CR atom. Uh, but we need more, right? Uh, that gets you to a total of 12. Um, chromium has 24 electrons, so we need 12 more. So we asked that question. The next highest is 3P. Uh, the next highest is 3P. That can hold six. Uh, that's We need more than that. So we're going to fill up that 3P6. Uh, so then uh, we're now sitting at 18 total. We need to do six more. Next highest energy is 4S. Because that is S type, it can only hold two. Okay, So we know that can hold two more. We'll fill that up. Uh, so now we have four left to go, um, and the next highest energy is 3D. Because it is a D-type orbital, that can only hold 10 uh, total electrons. Um, and so four is less than 10, so we just put all four into that 3D subshell. Um, and so we can see then that this chromium, all 24 electrons have been assigned. Importantly, everything that was full here uh, matches up. Um, we can also see that, you know, everything like back here, the 1s, 2s, we can see that is maintained through everything. Anything with more electrons than beryllium, anything with more than four electrons, the first four electrons all fall into that exact same pattern as we just keep building up. Because the subshells follow the same energy ordering, as a result, we get the same patterns of just kind of an expansion on that kind of similar uh, pattern of going on. Anything more than chromium, right? If we think there's kind of this pattern of filled shells in chromium, anything with more electrons than chromium, all those subshells are still full. And the 3Ds just get more and more electrons in them until eventually that gets full and you move into 4P, then 5S, and so on and so on. It just keeps going up. So this alphabet principle, this idea of building up, that ordering is always the same. So the bottom of the periodic table and the bottom right is Agonesson. That's number 118, 118 electrons. If you put all of those electrons into the orbitals, uh, you would get the following electron configuration. Now, this is really long. Um, you can see this is starting to become a bit of a pain. But importantly, this 118 contains, it's built up, on all the electron configurations of all the smaller atoms on the periodic table, right? We can see the same patterns we saw previously, right? 1s2, 2s2 of beryllium. We can get the 1s2 all the way up to the 3s2 um, that we saw, or 3p6, sorry, for uh, silicon. Um, following through there, you know, we can get then the pattern we had up to chromium, right? We can build upon those, just keep growing and growing. Um, they're just all the higher energy orbitals were empty uh, for those smaller atoms, but not for something big like agonescent. So for our participation three assignment, uh, so this is the one due April 2nd, question one, I would like you to write the electron configuration of the following atoms. So I got carbon, aluminum, and titanium. Um, 
again, this is going to be something when you're looking in there that's going to be a little bit difficult to uh, get some formatting right with the exponents. I wouldn't worry too much about that for now. Um, the goal is just to get something written in there that is relevant related to these electron configurations. So for participation assignment three, our first question, I'd like you to write the electron configurations of carbon, aluminum, and titanium. Okay, so for week 10, that participation assignment three um, is gonna be due uh, April 2nd, as the name implies. Um, you also still have a week 10 homework and a lab eight. Um, those are both due this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, respectively. Uh, if you have any questions about electron configurations or any of these due dates, uh, let me know. Uh, otherwise, see you in the next one.